pleasure meeting you. Pleasure speaking to you today. Noodles and Dexter from The Offspring. How are you doing, guys? Are you excited for the upcoming months? I mean, uh, there's a lot coming. We are, yes. Yeah, yeah. especially, uh, you know, we've. I think all of next year we're going to be on the road uh, touring and hopefully playing a lot of songs off the new record, Supercharged. Right, that's that's what we talk about today. But uh, I would like to get from you guys a little summary from the from your festival summer. I I know a lot of things happened, and is there anything that will stick with you for a while from this uh, summer tour? Oh yeah, I mean we got to play a bunch of great shows. I think in Germany we did what Southside and Hurricane Festival. Uh, those shows were great. Those were amazing. Um, one of the festivals we got to play right between Queens of the Stone Age and Foo Fighters, um, and that was incredible. Um, we're friends with both those guys, uh, both those bands, and uh, we're just, you know, huge fans of both those bands as well. So we get to play with a lot of great people. We got to play with Ed Sheeran and Youngblood. They they joined us on stage. Um, yeah, I saw that. And I, and I saw the tattoo that Ed Sheeran got from from uh, the album cover. And, yeah, yeah. And he also good, told you that, that like, uh, the first CD he bought was, like, a, uh, the, the option record, right? It was that that record, Conspiracy of One. His aunt gave him 10 pounds for Christmas and he went out and bought his first CD ever and it was uh, Conspiracy of One. How, how was the experience playing with Ed Sheeran on stage? Because like you you move in very different spaces musically, but I mean, music connects people, I guess. How, how did this came together? Uh, it was great, right? Ed is a, is a fan of all kinds of music. He also, he's also done some collaboration with Danny Filth of... <laughs> you know, so um, he, he, you know, I think like all serious musicians, he likes a lot of different kinds of music. So it was easy. He, he was, he was, he showed up. We ran through it once backstage, and easy peasy. I also saw you played with uh, Brian May earlier this year. Do you do you get starstruck if you meet someone like like Brian May? Is it or yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely starstruck. How, how was that experience? Take me through it. It was great. It was Dexter who set that up, uh, the Starmus Festival. I mean, he's a legend. What can you? What can we say? And he does this festival that combines science with music and the arts, and um, that was really interesting to to me. So we hit him up and asked if we could please uh, be a part of the festival, and they said yes. So it was really amazing. Great, great. Um, can you coming back to to the CD story? Can you guys remember your first CD you bought or or how you got it? Because I was, I was wondering if if the new record you release uh, next month will be someone's first CD, perhaps. I love that you think I'm young enough that the first thing I bought was a, a CD. CD right? <laughs> well, well, I mean, at one point you bought your first CD, I guess. Yeah, uh, I mean, when when we were young, it was LPs, really, what we what we got, and. Uh, I think that well, the very first one I I got I actually asked my parents to buy it for me. It was a, a two record set of you know like rock hits, and it had the Kinks on it, the Who on it, the Monkees, um, you know, a bunch of stuff like that. It was kind of like a compilation record. Yeah, I mean, there were always albums floating around our house from our parents and older brothers and sisters and stuff. So everything from Creedence Clearwater to Led Zeppelin, those kinds of records were floating around. I think maybe my first record might have been probably Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So then then you guys started making music. And uh, I mean, in, in the 90s, punk rock was like the contrary to like the big glam 80s metal and the big mainstream rock and roll, right? What what do you think ro uh, punk rock represents now? What What it's going up against? Is it still like David versus, versus Goliath, that type, type of thing? Or do you think it's a different mission for punk rock nowadays? No, we kick Goliath's, Goliath's ass already. It's easy for me I, to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. So I, I, mean, I mean, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, punk rock is, is has it's just part of it's all part of the mix of mainstream music you know you've got different kinds of pop you, you've got different metals how many different kinds of metal music are there now oh, you know um, yeah different types of edm there's different types of punk there's you know there's emo there's hardcore there's pop punk you know um so it's it's all in the mix now i think and and i think it's great that you have so many different avenues to uh you know of music and different styles of music to listen to and and the bands are all you know all the different musicians are getting together and collaborating as well 
when when you think about that change in like what punk rock represents maybe or what it is in the in the space of music how do you what do you think the offspring does differently now than in the in the early days and and what definitely stayed the same all the way through well i think what we've always done differently is punk rock's always been about aggression <clears throat> you know an attitude um and and just raw power um and when we were first starting off in the in the 80s most of the bands were hardcore really percussive you know and angry but not a lot of melody not a lot of songwriting really and we have always kind of focused on that you know we love bands like you know the ramones um that really had kind of you know pop sensibilities but played at breakneck speed um so i think really it was it was the songwriting and melodies that we added to to the, that made us successful and made us stand out Well, and and now there's there's the new record coming out, supercharged in like uh, a month or close to a month. Um, two singles are already out. I think two very different singles, in my opinion. Um, is there a, a reason for these two to be out yet uh, in 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 front of the album, or is it like a, a label thing, or do you have any saying in that? Yeah, no, we we discuss it. You know what? It, it's it's kind of. A no-brainer when you write a record, which songs are going to be more radio friendly, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so, and we discuss all that stuff with management and with the record label, and then with radio people that we know. We've got a good friend that worked radio for years, and he gives us tons of advice. He's a really, really close friend of ours. Um, so, as far as which one they want, you know, will go to radio first. We kind of take their advice, you know, into account. And then we release a punk song so that the hardcore fans, hardcore offspring fans, know we're still we're still with them. I mean, what what <laughs> makes, what what is more fun to 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 play in the studio? Like the the light it up, the fast paced um, energy one, or make it all right, which is I feel more like the uh, the festival time to sing along, have party, do a circuit pit. Right. I think they're both fun. I think too. So, but two sides, two sides of our band, both part, both part of who we are, I guess for sure. I mean, we love the energy of the punk rock song, and that really gets us going in the studio for sure. But then when you can put together a, you know, a really melodic song like "Make It All Right," that feels really good too. Both songs, you know, we've been playing them both live recently, and they both make me want to jump up and down on stage. So that's, that's what it's all about for me. Is that what what the fans can expect from the whole record? Like the mix of like all that the offspring has to offer from the last you know nearly forty years, uh, and yeah, I also heard that there will be some heavier tunes on that too. So maybe you can talk a little about about the album. What's it what's it about? How it came together? Yeah, for sure. Well, we we call it supercharged because that's kind of how we feel as a band. We feel charged up and and ready to go. But it, there's also, you know, another way you can look at it. The whole world seems to be on edge, like it's supercharged. So there's a little bit of that, too. And then the songs are supercharged. And, right? and the songs are, yeah. We wanted this album to feel like it was very high energy from the beginning to the end, right? Yeah. And just uh, come at you nonstop the whole time, I think. That was kind of the idea on this record. There, there isn't a lot of stuff that people would consider weird or out there on this record. It's just kind of what people say they like from The Offspring. That's what we wanted to serve up this time. And it's not long ago that you released your last record, so so there was like a short time span in between the last, and then the one before was like ten years ago from that, two thousand twelve, I I think. How how is it uh, to be so fast in in putting together the new album if when there was a, like a period in the two thousand tens where there was no album at all? So you feel good about that, right? Supercharged. I mean, that's also what the album represents. Yeah, when right before. Right before we finished the last record, we had a real productive period, like the last year, year and a half before we put it out. And then we had to put it out in the middle of a pandemic, which kind of sucked. And uh, it was a pretty dark time. And But but we still kept that momentum. Um, the The record did pretty well. And we went out and toured and and the touring went exceptionally well. And so we feel like we're, you know, things are really moving for us. Let's keep let's keep it going. And we knew we didn't want to wait nine years again between records to put out a record. Right, we're not waiting for another pandemic for sure. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, yeah. no. Um, I, I saw that uh, you're gonna go fuck it. Uh, reached one billion streams on Spotify. That's that's fucking milestone. I mean, um, what do you think about like these kinds of successes? When you, I mean, 
nearly got it all in your career already. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would have never it's thought. Super cool. It looks like uh, Kids Aren't All Right is, is going to follow it up, you know, and that'll yeah. be the next that'll one. That'll hit a billion so, in the next few months, I think. Yeah. So having two is just uh, insane beyond what we yeah. could ever hope for. We're stoked. And I mean, if even if the song is a few years old right now, I saw a video of you guys playing at Hellfest this year. It was fucking bonkers how the crowd went nuts when you played this song. And it, I mean, it's for you, it's like every night, right? So, I mean, it's, it's clearly a fixed song in your playlist because everyone wants to hear it. Yeah, for sure. There's, there's a number of songs that we have to play every night, you know, or the fans will be pissed. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some there's also some deeper record cuts that we we like to play, but some that we have to cut or change, you know, just for time constraints. And we know we're we're always deleting somebody's favorite song, you know, unfortunately, but you know, we can't get can't get everybody's favorite song in there, unfortunately. Talking about uh favorite songs from people, I was wondering um if there was one song you could choose from The all the whole albums, all albums overall, which screams the most like this is the offspring. And not, that doesn't necessarily need to be like a, one of the more popular songs. It can be anyone you like. But what's like the core, what you feel like it's the core of the offspring? Do you have one in mind? Oh gosh. I mean, I think based on where we came from, we grew up very much a punk band and like Noodle said, a punk band that wanted to have melody in their song. So I would say Staring at the Sun, I guess, off of Americana. All right. Um, I, I'm going to go with Kids Aren't All Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good one. That, that's that, that kind of does, you know, it's based on the neighborhood we grew up in and how we all, you know, when we were young kids, we're all growing up and everybody's future seems so bright. And then Throughout time, you, you, we saw our contemporaries slowly slipping through the cracks of society and, and you know, really kind of finding themselves either lost or, or sometimes even dead. So that song's really personal uh, to yeah. who we are. You think one of the, of the new uh, songs from the, from the new record will also be uh, core The Offspring material? I mean, you everything, I, I guess, but... Uh, we've been getting a lot of feedback. People say it reminds them of either Smash or Americana, taking them back, um, depending on the song. Um, who knows what you know? Time will tell. But but I think these songs hold up. You know that we I, I, this whole record. I would put it up against any Offspring record. I think it's. I always think it's the best thing we've ever done. But I really think this one's the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so you will play a lot of these songs uh, on tour last uh, next year, I guess. I hope so. There's some really fun songs on this record. There's there's one real kind of rocker, Get Some. I really hope we get to play that because it's just such a fun guitar riff. But, you know, if the fans like other songs, we'll play the other songs. I mean, know, this, cool with any of it. this album isn't just an excuse to get back on tour. I think too often now because it's hard to sell records, fans just they put together a record because they, they want to have something to go out on tour with. But We're dead serious about this record and, and we want to promote it and play all the songs and we want people, we can't wait for people to hear the new material. Do you like uh, distribute this to your other like uh, musician friends and they get the peak uh, listen? Like you talked about being friends with the Foo Fighters and, and like they, do they get the, like a, a, a private listening session or something? Well, not those guys, no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Josh. <laughs> Josh is on about half the record, so Josh Freeze knows true. he knows a lot of the songs. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I often send our new CD out to guys like Fletcher from Pennywise, okay, or, yeah, or, yeah, you know, sure. what have you. So yeah, that's that's pretty common. Yeah, yeah, more more like to get a professional opinion about it, or in the finished product to get them like a sneak peek. Just because we're excited about it, yeah. we <laughs> friends that we think would like it. Yeah, and, and friends who's well, friends that we just want to stoke, or friends that who's who's. Uh, whose um, opinion we really respect. Yeah, right, right. So t talking about the next month, what's, what, months, what's, what's coming up with you guys? I saw you go uh, on a little detour to South uh, Africa with Green Day. And uh, otherwise, um, tell me about what's, what's coming up with the next album and the next year and tours and uh, what can we expect from you guys? Yeah, we're doing little things here and there throughout the rest of the year and then starting up our tour proper um you know i think in january and we'll beginning and, next year yeah um i think we're starting with south africa which will be nice we've been there once so it'll only be our second time there i think we're doing cape town and johannesburg both, 
purposes, I believe. Yeah, yeah. We we want to go everywhere next year. Like I said, we're so pumped to be putting out this record, and we want to tour as many places as we can. So we'll be coming back to Germany, of course. And, of uh, course, yeah. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we had the best headline show in Berlin last year. It was the, it was yeah. the best the best show in Germany I think we've ever had. Um, it was just incredible. So we can't wait to come back. The festivals are really great, and there's just an energy to it that's really big, but playing your own headline show is is really the best. So we're looking forward to doing that again. Perfect. Great. So I, I'm really looking forward for the new record. I'm really excited. I, I guess you guys are too. And and for the fans' reactions. It was, it was really nice talking to you guys. Dexter Noodles from The Offspring. We see you guys definitely next year in Germany. And uh, Thank you, I want Alex. to you guys with, with uh, some nice words for the German audience, the German radio listeners in here, your fans, of course. Yeah, we've got great fans in, here in Germany, and we have for over 30 years. I think our first time here was in 1993. We started yeah. developing a fan base. We were opening up for No Effects back then. Uh, but we knew that the German fans love punk rock from you know early on, even before we ever got to come over. So thank you to, to all our German fans. Uh, we really appreciate your support. We'll see you soon. Perfect. Perfect. Bye, guys.